Here I am. Thank you. I want to express uh, my thanks for Sherry, my family, of uh, all that uh, has been ours to experience with you over the last 25 years. Uh, we have been so indebted to uh, those who have journeyed with us. Uh, thank you for just being the body of Christ to us. And uh, we, we come and uh, we, we got the baton. So we're, we're past the um, We're going to pass the baton today. And uh, as we do that, I want to uh, go to 2 Timothy, if you want to turn your Bibles to there. Um, when you think about sharing last things, uh, they are always important. Last things are important. And as I thought about sharing with Pastor Jim in particular, and with this congregation, some last things, I wanted to go to Paul's last things. 2 Timothy is the last book that Paul wrote. He is addressing it, obviously, to this younger man, Timothy. And he's sharing uh, some of his heart and vision for what to see carried on from his ministry. So what we'll do with 2 Timothy is uh, we're going to just look at a few verses along the way. I'm going to take uh, primarily the first couple of verses or so of each chapter. And talk about what I sense will be important to say. You know, if, if I said some things today, uh, that might be good and well, but this has been written thousands of years ago, read and heard by millions if not billions of people. These words will last forever. And so that's what I wanted to, to leave with uh, the congregation and leave with Pastor Jim for today. So looking at, at 2 Timothy, starting in there in chapter 1, uh, Paul is, of course, introducing himself. And I'm not Paul, and Jim's not Timothy. So uh, let's get that straight right from the beginning. <laughs> but uh, as he addresses uh, Timothy, it's, I think, important of what he says. He says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. And uh, the will of God, what matters? What matters in life? What matters is the will of God. And uh, when I came to the Lord about 45 years ago or so, all of a sudden things changed in my life because I was living for my will. I was doing everything I wanted to do for me. And all of a sudden something else was introduced into my life and I was like, but there is someone else who has a will for my life. And I need to start to seek that out. And so. That started that journey, but then 25 years ago, living in Greenville, South Carolina, and wondering what was next, I get a call from Harry Simmons. And our, our phone was by the kitchen here, and there was a little hallway that went down, and then there was a bathroom to the right, and then some bedrooms on down the right. And we had a long cord on our phones. You remember cords on phones? <laughs> Some of you might remember that. So Sherry could be in the kitchen with that phone and working in the kitchen because it went that direction. But if I didn't want to be interrupted or whatever, I just took the phone around into the bathroom and closed the door and <laughs> sat on the floor in the bathroom. So Harry, we talked on the phone that evening. Me sitting in the bathroom, were you sitting in the bathroom? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Some things haven't changed over 25 years. <laughs> but what was the point? The will of God. What was the will of God for this congregation? What was the will of God for sharing me at that point? Five years ago, we started praying, didn't we? said, Lord, what's your will? What's your will as this church body moves forward, as we get older, and as the music fades, and the Joneses fade, uh, what, what is the will of God? So that's, that was the all-important thing. And so we came to the conclusion that we would pray and ask God to bring someone along who could carry the ministry on to the next step. And so God brought 
Pastor Jim, Jessica and the family, to Mary and Grace. And we're at that point now where we're handing off the baton, right? This is where, this is where we are today, in the will of God. And that's the all-important thing, is in the will of God. And I, I want us to look, though, what else he says there in verse 1. He says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life in Christ Jesus. How many times is Christ Jesus mentioned there? Paul wants it front and center right from the very beginning. And that's uh, really, if, if nothing else that I share here, front and center, I want Jesus Christ to be exalted. That's, that's the point, front and center, Jesus. And so, by the will of God, we come. And so, simply and surely, it's all about Jesus. <coughs> so when the music fades and all is stripped away, what is it? It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. He says to him, then in verse 2, to Timothy, my beloved son. Now, was Timothy Paul's son? No. Is Jim my son? No. Not sure. No. No. <laughs> my son. I do have a random assortment of sons here today. Why don't you guys stand up? Let me see how many of these are my sons. So. But Jim is not my son. Good man. <laughs> but obviously in the relationship that Timothy and Paul had is something that Jim and I have shared in a degree over these years where we're passing the baton on. And, and because it's all about relationships. It's all about relationships. And, and we're uh, moving on. So you are a beloved son. And what I love about Jim is that he has a heart for God, and he has a heart for people. Amen. Amen. And if I put those two things together in the Great Commission and in the Great Commandment, then I'm encouraged by what my beloved son is going to do in carrying on ministry here at Aaron Grace. So he ends those, those verses with grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus being centered. So for the Spellman family, we trust for grace, mercy, and peace in the next year's ahead. For this church family, grace, mercy, and peace. Well, he continues to talk to his son in verse 1 of chapter 2. He says, Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in the center of Christ Jesus. And so that would be the often repeated command, encouragement, admonition in Scripture. Be strong. And Jim, you're going to have to be strong. You're just going to have to be strong. You have to be strong not in yourself, but you have to be strong in Christ Jesus. And where we'll go in chapter 3, the first verses, difficult times are coming. And there are some difficult things. Life is difficult. But... Be strong. Be strong where? Not in yourself, but in the grace that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Be strong in grace. Keep calling yourself Mary in grace, okay? That's a great name. Grace. And so, to be strong. And Paul had said, Titus chapter 2, that, that grace actually teaches us something. It's to deny ourselves, to deny ungodliness. Grace is strong. And you have to be strong in grace. But I ask you as, as a church family, be strong in grace too and, and be gracious to this man and his family. Be gracious so that you can move together in the grace, the mercy, and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then find others. Verse 2 of that chapter, things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Just that process of one passing on to the other, passing grace on one to the other. And that's what we all have the privilege of doing, but that's going to be a particular charge to Jim to pass along 
to faithful men and women the grace that he's received in Jesus. But as we said in chapter 3, verse 1, difficult times will come. And I found that in my 25 years here, I've had one particular person who's been very difficult. It's not you, Luke, even though he volunteered that. <laughs> and it's not the rest of you guys either, in case you're wondering. It's me. It's me. It's been the difficult one. The difficult one's been myself. So to be strong in the grace that's in the Lord Jesus Christ and the difficult times that come, you're going to have to deal with the number one enemy, yourself. And you're going to have to keep going back to the Lord for grace, just for yourself, let alone for God's people that he puts before you. Because these difficult times will come. To know where the battle lies, we're told in Ephesians 6 to be strong too, aren't we? Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. And we are understanding that our warfare is not against flesh and blood. So there's a strong spiritual battle that needs to be waged, needs to be fought. In those difficult times, there is an answer to them. And he concludes that chapter in verse 15 through 17 of chapter 3. That from childhood you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation. Through faith, which is, where's the center? Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. The final charge is what Paul gives to Timothy in verses 1 and 2 of chapter 4. I solemnly charge you. In the presence of God and Christ Jesus, the sinner, who is the judge, the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. There is an answer to the difficult times. There's an answer to the difficult person within. God's word is the answer. So preach the word, Jim. Preach it in season, out of season, repute, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. There'll be times when it's accepted and expected, for you to share the word, and then there's going to be other times when it's not very comfortable. And it doesn't seem to be welcomed or fit. But Paul says, these difficult times do have an answer. And it's in the word of God. <coughs> and so, he says, preach the word. And he ends that instruction, he says, with great patience and instruction. Great patience and instruction. Again, I charge you as a church family, show great patience. Is this a perfect man or a perfect family? No. And you haven't experienced that along the way either. But be patient. Be patient. We've had some very uh, patient people in this congregation. If you've been here from the time we were here 25 years ago. Stand up right now. So these are people who have journeyed along the way and been very, very patient. <laughs> Good, thank you. So now for those who have made this journey so far and those of you who have joined in the journey, be patient, be patient. Because it is all about relationships. It's all about a relationship with God and a relationship with people. Love God and love people. We're going to need to be strong because there are going to be some difficult times. When I started 25 years ago, things weren't as difficult as they are now. Just our society, life in general, it wasn't as difficult. It's changed. So you're going to have to be strong in difficult times. But the main charge, I think, Jim, that I would give to you and for the congregation is stay centered on Jesus Christ and let the Word of God lead you there. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to have been part of your work here over these years. And thank you, the Lord, um, that 
Sherry and I have a great, great privilege of not saying goodbye, but saying that we're moving on together in another role. But Lord, for what you want to do in the days ahead, I commit Jim, Jessica, Isaac, Fiona, Jane, and Lucy to you, to your grace, Lord, to your mercy, to your peace, that, Lord, they would be strong, all of them, but in particular as Jim leads his family and leads his church family, Lord, that he would be strong in your grace. So thank you, Lord. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, brother, here it is. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you, John. I'm really grateful for John Jones. Our first meeting seemed accidental to me, but it was actually orchestrated by a former uh, pastor on staff at Delaware Grace. And he knew John, and he knew me, and he knew they were praying for someone, and he knew my desire to preach and land somewhere, and so he introduced us. And when Dave Pacheco introduced us, he assumed that I had already, uh, he, he assumed that, uh, um, he, he didn't know that, well, let me back up. When he introduced us, John assumed that I already knew why we're being introduced. I had no idea. So this guy, John Jones, comes up, shakes my hand, like, oh, hi, hi, I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. And he wanted to get together for, forget if it was coffee or lunch or what now. And he assumed I knew, and I was kind of like, uh, okay, well, sure, we'll get together. And he thought, wow, well, for a guy that's looking to you know, be an associate pastor, he doesn't seem very excited about it. I was just thinking, hey, it's a guy to meet for coffee and hang out. <laughs> so then I found out what was going on, and it was a major answer to prayer, and it was a serious God thing in our lives. And I can't thank God first, enough, uh, first of all enough for what he's done. He is faithful. God is faithful. Um, I won't tell you my life story because we'll be here till 3 o'clock, but I'll tell you the five cent version. Years ago when I was sort of looking for anything for God to lead me, I was just looking for purpose, I guess. I was between jobs, I was right after college, I wasn't married, nothing was going on big in my life. and. A friend of mine, actually my good friend David from Africa, who I hope you'll meet someday, he lives in Philly, but um, I'm invited to come out and visit someday. He shared Psalm 138 8 with me, and it became what I call my life verse for many years, for the next 20 years. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. I clung to that. I said, God, you're faithful. You will fulfill your purpose for me. I don't have to figure it out on my own. Praise God for that, right? Some of you may still be looking for that purpose. Cling to Him. He will fulfill His purpose for you. So that's been very special to me. Was someone taking notes so I can remember what John said to me? Uh, just kidding, I have it all here. I'm just going to kind of go through uh, some of the points that John gave out of 2 Timothy. I jotted a response. And so I just want to give a few brief responses. Pastor John was talking to me, but he was also talking to you. So I'll keep reminding you of that. So this is for you too. So I hope you're listening. Here we go. Uh, first of all, uh, God's word lasts forever. Amen. So I want to be in God's word to teach and preach God's word, not my words. Because my words don't mean anything. And... John talked about it all, it's all about Christ. He's front and center. As, as exciting and bittersweet and as this is for the Jones family, you guys are a great looking bunch. It's great to see you. It's not about John, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about any of us. Thank God for that, it's about him, it's about Jesus. We want to keep him front and center. And then, uh, John said, be strong, be strong, and our men's group that meets occasionally, if you're not a part of that, join in, we'll be doing that the third Saturday of January, 
and uh, our kind of our little verse that we have to go with our men's group is 1 Corinthians 16, 13 and 14. And you men should memorize it, but it's good for all of us. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 and 14 says this. I like it because it's short sentences, so it's good for guys. You know, we can remember it easier. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. I'm preaching to myself and you. Act like men. Be strong. That's pretty cool. Then it finishes up with, let all that you do be done in love. Be Christ-like, Christ-centered, Christ-powered warriors for his kingdom. But do it in love. Jesus, I like to call him, he's our lover warrior. He's a lover of our soul, but he's a warrior too. He hates sin. Because it robs him of glory. My prayer and my desire is that 2017 would be the best year for all of us in giving glory to God as God does stuff in us, as he does stuff in me, and I invite him to do that. Then John challenged me to teach other men. We're praying for a few good men. Some strong men who aren't strong in their own power, but strong in Jesus to kind of rise up and become future leaders, elders, deacons, teachers, whatnot. And there's a few of you guys that are sort of been tagged for that, but I'm praying for more. I want some young guys that will come and join us. Here's a challenge. Wednesday. Is it Wednesday we're meeting? Kevin? Kevin and I are meeting Wednesday at 9 o'clock in my office around the round table. We're going to open up the Word and we're just going to dig in. If you happen to be free and able to join us, guys, come. Seriously. Make it a commitment. 9 o'clock Wednesday. And I'll do my best as God teaches me. Difficult times. We've already been through it. My family's been beat up in some ways. We're looking for... Lord willing, a better year ahead. Um, but John reminded me that his biggest difficulty through the years wasn't other people but himself. And I agree with that. I like what John Piper, another John, said. He said to his congregation, the biggest problem in this church is me standing in the pulpit. Pray for me, please. Well, I have good news and bad news, uh, John. Bad news first, I can't do this. Good news is, that's good that I can't do this. Brian Winnick has been good at reminding me often that if I thought I could do it by myself, I shouldn't be doing it. Amen? And if I ever think I can do this without God's help, you better fire me and look for another pastor. I need to be so utterly dependent on him every day day, every minute, and you need him too, and I'll remind you of that. In fact, John 15 was the passage I thought of. John 15, verse 4, 4 and 5, John 15, 5 could be a good memory verse. <laughs> Find a verse to memorize. Beginning of the new year. Uh, starting in verse 4, John 15 says, and this is Jesus talking. He's talking to me and to you, to the whole church. He says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. Okay, got that? Now verse 5, Jesus says, I'm the vine. Now this is Jesus talking. I'm, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting down there with you guys in that chair right there by me. Jesus says, I'm the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he or she it is that bears much 
fruit. You want to be fruit bearing? And then he concludes with this. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, I can't do anything. You can't do anything. That's eternal or lasting or kingdom building. Let's not forget that. And I need that for the next challenge that John gave. Preach the word in every season, even when it's not popular. Friends, the day may come. Maybe not really soon, but we don't know. The day may come when America could change to the point that I could go to jail for saying things from this Bible that people don't like. It becomes offensive enough. It's happening in other countries. Who's to say it won't? I'm not trying to scare anyone, but let's be realistic, okay? I need to be prepared for that scenario. Maybe it won't be in my lifetime. We have no idea. But am I willing to preach in such a way, even if it puts my own life at risk? I want to be. But if I'm abiding, <laughs> power. In fact, it goes on, Paul says in another chapter, he says, the kingdom of God is not about talk. It's about power. We don't want empty talk, empty words. We want the power of the living God to break in and do tremendous things in our lives and in this church and in this community that we will be a light on a hill, unashamed, shining into the darkness. Pray for that in the coming year. <coughs> what John did not address and wasn't in my notes is one final thought. Paul talks about building on the foundation of another. And that whatever is built can only be built on one foundation, that's Jesus Christ. If it hadn't been for John Jones and his faithfulness and sticking it out, not quitting over the past 25 years, then there wouldn't be a church here for me to be a part of continue to shepherd. So I have John to thank that he let Jesus use him. Thank you, John, for your faithfulness and your family to share with all of you for supporting your dad and your father-in-law. It's your faithfulness that allows me this opportunity, not to mention the mentorship that John has given me over the past four years. You've been patient with me. You've been patient with me. I need to be patient with myself. And I need to be patient with you. And we all need to be patient with one another. And I think as we are patient with one another in our, in our marriages, and our relationships, with our kids, in the church body, it, what, what happens is those little grievances, those little nitpicky things that can grab hold, and they can just roll right off. <sighs> it doesn't mean anything. I'm not going to take offense to that. They didn't really mean it. Friends, I can help you in all your relationships. Just let it go. We'll move on. But if I need, if, if you need forgiveness from me from something I do, and I don't see it, tell me. Be bold with that. If I need to forgive you for something, I will. So please, uh, please pray for me and my family. Continue to pray for the Jones family as John and Sherry uh, go into their training in Atlanta and then on to France. That's exciting. And remember, when John and Sherry go to France, they're not just, they're not leaving us. They are an extension of the church. We're sending them out to France. So our church is, in a sense, growing in France. That's exciting. Pray that God says great things. And um, he'll bring other people over time. As God works here in us, I don't know what the coming year will look like. But if we go into it together, prayerfully, trusting God, abiding in him, we'll see some good things happen. 
regardless of what trials we may face. So I want to thank all of you. Thank you for <coughs> praying for me and my family. And um, as we go into the new year, I, I hope we can continue to pray all the more, go deeper in Jesus. Someone shared last night at our New Year's Eve party, there, the desire that we grow spiritually, that all of us, this would be the year that we yearn, we long for Jesus a little bit more, to go a little deeper in Him. Let's make it that year. Let's resolve that we're going to do that. The next few weeks, we're going to be talking about no excuses. That'll be probably the sermon series title. You know, excuses, big no in front of it. No more excuses as we go forward. Let's remove the excuses and the things that keep us from growing. <coughs> what are those? Let's, let's, we'll talk about that. So pray for me. Uh, this is just a, something I ordered on Amazon. It's just a symbol. In and of itself, it's a little piece of cheap metal, lightweight. But what does it represent? It says, run for the prize. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. So I'll just end and conclude with that uh, verse. I think you'll see why I pulled it out and put it on this uh, baton. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. It says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Or some of your Bibles will say, run in such a way as to win the prize. All of us spiritually can run for the prize, our own race that God has us on, the journey that we're in. You may struggle at times. Our job here is to come alongside one another and help one another as we struggle through the journey. I'll struggle at times, you'll struggle at times. Do it together. Run to the prize. 1 Corinthians 9.24, January 1, 2017. This will be my reminder. Don't let me forget. I need a strong grip. Pray that my grip stays strong. It's easy in busyness to not realize your grip is starting to loosen. The next thing you know, where did that go? I dropped it. I want to hang on tight. So, uh, Dan will have thanks for offering to make a nice little plaque for this and it's going to hang on my wall so I can remember every day. Instead of me praying in conclusion, uh, Dale Clace, our elder, is going to come forward and we're also going to ask uh, Pastor John to come forward and we're going to give an opportunity for uh, those of you who want to, to pray. Dale. I too have a phone app for a Bible, and each day it comes up and gives me the verse of the day. And this morning I pulled it up and it said, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Great verse for the new year, very appropriate. But uh, even though my memory's slipping a little bit, I do remember that this was a uh, particular verse that uh, came to John and Sherry when they were considering coming to Marion 25 years ago. And so, and gee, guess what? It's right there in your program today. So, great, great verse. Before we pray, I think it's appropriate. Let's have a photo op right down here. So you two with the baton. Anyone get your cell phones out? If you want to take a picture, now's the time. Okay, just a couple minutes to make that happen. Now, is that the way you do it? Just track and track? You may need to me. You might need the coach to help to teach you how to. Let me get out of that.
All right, now. Jim, you're not, you're not in this on your, on your own. Jessica, get up here. Where's the family? Isaac, come on, are they all here today? Janie, Fiona, Lucy, here they come. And Sherry, come up here with John. Let's get in here. <coughs> Slide in there, guys. Want that picture get quick? Here we better get a photo op on oh that. Everybody up here, all the judges get up here. You knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Work it in around the tibby, how you however you want to get in there. I don't know if we got a wide enough lens, but uh, <laughs> both families in there.